This video is sponsored by BrandCrowd, and you'll hear more about them in just a moment. I think social media has changed so many things for the better, but also for the worse. This constant culture of comparison going on with young individuals. It's not really a good way to view life, constantly comparing yourself. I'm very grateful for everything that I have to this day, but like I'm still figuring it out. I still don't know what I want to do. It is not all sunshines and rainbows. I think that's just part of being human. I think you gotta have a dream. The school of greatness. Really? <laughs> yeah. Please welcome Lewis House. So three years in the making, we met, uh, you know, two blocks away from here about three years ago, as you were on the rise uh -huh. to your social media, TikTok, internet, sensational fame that you've been on, I think, uh, what do you have close to like 40 or 50 million followers now on all your platforms? But three years ago, you kind of, who, who's counting? Yeah, yeah, who, like we lost that. count a while ago. <laughs> but back then you were just kind of taken off month by month, just like doubling and yeah. came out of nowhere. You were, I remember seeing videos of you as this, you know, D1 soccer kid, right? Who was like 19. And then all of a sudden COVID hits and you have nothing to do. Uh -huh. You're kind of like, what do I do with my time? School year gets cut short. Soccer season gets cut short. You had one dream going towards, I'm assuming soccer and trying to play professionally. Correct. And then you started making TikTok videos for, for fun as a little side thing. And in one month, I think you said you got your first million followers. Is that right? Around that, yeah. Something like Something that. like that, yeah. And then all of a sudden, when did you realize that, oh, maybe like this soccer thing, dream that I had for probably a decade isn't the main thing anymore, or maybe school isn't even the main thing, but I'm going to start trying this other thing. When did you realize like this is a new possibility for you? Um, I would say when I think the opportunities became just too good to pass up. I think when the numbers started to grow, when emails started to come in, my email was attached on my TikTok and I started getting emails that I couldn't even believe with numbers that I had never seen before. Like as financial opportunities, financial like sponsorship opportunities. deals, brand yeah. deals. Yep, all of those. And as a NCAA Division One athlete at that time- You couldn't make money. Couldn't make money. And I talked to the Dean about it and everything. Like I went to University of Portland and I literally told my coach, I was like, hey coach, I have a question. Who can you put me in contact with? I have some questions regarding like NCAA and the rules because I know you're allowed to have a, as a D1 athlete, you're allowed to have like a job if I was like a barista somewhere yeah, or something like, like that. Like minimum wage. Right. But you're not allowed to make money off the likeness of your name. And although I wasn't selling jerseys or autographs or whatever, um, they still, I, I had a long talk with my dean about it. And I was like, look, I'm making videos, you know, it has nothing to do. Like I, I post some soccer content, but like, for the most part, people don't even know I play. And so <laughs> right. so I'm like, is there something we can do here? Because I'm getting money thrown at me that I've never seen before. And as like a college student that had never really had work experience, I was like, please let me do this. And he was like, unfortunately, like it, it restricts NCAA rules. And so that also kind of helped me make that decision. Isn't that crazy? But now, like just six months after that, I think NIL... Uh, yep. Started right, like shortly NCAA, right after like that. Shortly, like six months later, it was yep. like, okay, now you can make money with your name and likeness. Yep. But it was right before that the money was. I'm assuming it was in the five, ten, twenty thousand dollar opportunities at that time, early on, if not more. Yeah. And you're like, okay, one video to make this to pay for like a year of life. Right. It's hard to say no. It's to. hard to say no. And who knows what would have happened if you were able to make money as a college athlete? Do you think you would have still been playing? Well, that's the question, isn't it? I think uh, there's so many things that w played that would have played a factor that I go back and I think, you know, what if, you know, what if he said, yeah, go ahead, like do do the sponsored posts, do brand deals. Like, I don't care. Um, I don't think I ever would have stopped. I don't think there would have been that. You would have kept playing. I think I would have kept playing. And I think because it, it was crazy because I think my dad, my dad's like my biggest fan and he's my biggest supporter and he was my coach since I was three years old. And so, and he coaches a local high school team. And so having a coach as a dad, I mean, it had, it's ups and downs for sure. He, uh, sometimes the car rides home were not fun, but it's one of those things where he was hard on me for, for the better. And it, I don't, it just got to a point where he was like, if you're seriously considering quitting soccer, like you don't even have to tell me like this is he knows my love for the game and he knows how passionate I was for it and I am for it he was like this must be 
something huge because he's like i've never seen anything throw you off as much as this is so i think he understood like the magnitude of the opportunities that was given um and obviously he said that he didn't even really need to know but of course my mom and dad were still kind of hands-on with being like you know talking to the right people looking things up and like i give them as much info as i could but for the most part i didn't even know what was going on i was like i don't know this brand but they're offering to pay me like so it was pretty it was pretty nuts i, I can't lie and i think uh there are so many what ifs if really yeah if uh if the nil would have been a thing six months prior that's crazy man. yeah but here we are i think life uh puts us in different directions at different moments. You know, I got injured playing football. I was telling you before he jumped on camera and that was the dream. That was a passion. So yeah. for a year and a half, I was recovering from a surgery and an injury. And, um, I didn't know what was going to happen next, but I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't have done this show for the last 10 years. Had that injury not happened, I would have kept pursuing yeah. the same thing. And who knows, maybe it would have been a great run. Maybe I'd have broken my neck or something. You never right. know you what would happen. Know. So you might've been redirected for something greater right which is interesting and that's why i can't help but kind of frame my mindset as i'm like this happened for a reason so i'm just gonna you know do i mean as athletes i feel like growing up as athletes i think i was telling you before the cameras were on i it's just kind of how we're programmed with being so structured and disciplined and being like all right if i'm gonna do this i have a new like i got a new job and, you know it's like having a new coach like you want to impress the new coach and so Every time I would do something new in the entertainment industry and in, in this space, I was like, I'm going to give it the best I can. And I'm going to try to really throw myself in and like, what's the worst that can happen? Yeah. You know, you fail. And it's like, what was the biggest challenge over the last three years for you with getting so much popularity and I guess social media following and fame in a time of extreme cancel culture and a time of extreme yeah. celebrating individuals and cheering for people, but then yeah. also criticizing them and these kind of two extremes. Yeah, Let me of course. follow you, comment on everything, celebrate you and talk about you in right. a positive way. But then when I don't like something, let me criticize you, let me pull you down and let me shame you publicly. Yeah. How at 19 and now 22, have you navigated that process yeah i think you hit it right on the nose it's one of those things where uh it is just such a flaky industry and it's such a you know at one moment you're on top of the world and the next moment like you can breathe the wrong way and someone's got something to say and i think in the world we live in now and with the social media i think social media has changed so many things for the better but also for the worse i think this constant culture of like comparison going on with like young individuals and it's not it's not really a good way to to view life constantly comparing yourself and i think i don't know i yeah when i first started people at first nothing bad to say you know as i'm gaining traction and numbers kept rising people were like my God, let's like, you know, this guy's amazing. Let's keep him hidden. Like, don't let him blow up too much. Like that kind of thing. Like, keep him hidden? Let's keep him hidden. Like, that's kind of a thing. Right? Let's keep him our secret. Like, Really? Yeah, because I think... You're not a secret at 10 million followers, are no, you? No, not, not at that point. I think when it was like just before the millions, people were like, uh, like, where are these guys coming from? They keep spawning. And it's like, well, I just made an account. Like, as simple as that. And I think, uh, I don't know, when, so when someone feels a part of something like small, it feels a bit more intimate. And then like, it's funny that that is being said though because i have like uh i have like my og fans that have been there since the early days since like 10 20 000 followers that you that, recognize still the that i still to see. this day like you know i'm in group chats with them on instagram i'll chime in here and there and just be like hey guys hope you're all well like it's it's really fun having a community like that and like knowing that that 10 30 30 seconds out of your day can to stop into a group chat and be like hey guys i hope you all are well like not forgetting about you i think that can really like it's crazy that that can make someone's day yeah and um yeah with with uh, like with cancel culture it's uh it's one of those things where you kind of i don't know i don't i like to think i don't really have any have any skeletons in the closet really? you know so like I, i'm i'm just kind of like i'm able to be authentically myself and if you like me follow me and like let's go on this yeah. journey together but if not like i'm not gonna lose sleep over it like if you don't like me that's fine but but how do you deal with Maybe not cancel culture for you because you don't have a skeletons, but a criticism culture of course. and make wrong or just like comparison. Yeah. 
comparison and criticism culture where, okay, you were the, and still are, but you were three years ago, kind of the newer person coming out and creating yeah, content. Course, and course. now there's newer people doing that. New, exactly. Younger or more defined abs or whatever, yeah, exactly. whatever, longer hair. Better looking, of course, yeah. And how do you not let your self-worth be defined by criticism or comparison at such a young age? It's hard. It really is. And I, I can't lie. Like, I think I can't sit here and say it hasn't affected me. You know, there have been times where, you know, the likes are down, the engagement's low, you know, and as much as I don't want to ever look at that, it, like it's your job, you know, and it comes to a point where you kind of have to look at that and see what people are saying and seeing like what they want to see. And you can either choose to do th two things. You can give the people what they want, or you can just keep posting stuff that you like. And I think, uh, Saw that I saw or read this quote the other day. It was about, I don't know if I'm going to say it correctly, but it was basically something about like the work's never as good when you start to cater to other people. But as soon as like you start doing it for yourself, then it's a lot more like, like people can like see right through the authenticity. Yeah. And I think, uh, I don't know. I think that's just what I've kind of always kind of stayed, stayed firm to is the belief of just being myself and just posting stuff that I want to post. And like, I'm very, very, blessed and like grateful to have like the fan base that i have and yeah. people that support me the way that they do because at the end of the day like there are people that will do just about anything for a like or a click and i'm just grateful that i have people that will click no matter what like if i put out something but that being said i'm never going to take advantage of that and i'm never going to like take that for granted and i'm always going to try to put out my best stuff and yeah but i think going back to what i was saying with like it is a very you know, one moment you're on top of the world, the next moment you're you're nothing. And then all of a sudden you have a big project coming out and bam, you're back on top. And it's just like, I'm very aware of that. And I'm, I would tire myself out if I constantly tried to be at the top and constantly tried to do things that would make sure that I'm at the top, get stay people talking. And like, I enjoy the time when people aren't talking, you really? know? Really? I think so. I mean, you're, here's the thing. You're, you got 50 million followers. So it's not like you're not relevant. Right. But what do you mean, like being on top versus? You know, of course, yeah. your bottom is like five million views versus yeah. right, on a post as opposed yeah. to a hundred million views, right? Well, that would be someone's dream. Exactly. I it was. It's funny that you mentioned that because I was having a conversation the the other day um, with some of my friends, and we were talking about like who are also kind of influencers in the space, and they were they were kind of talking about the idea that you know. I, I, like, you know, it's the constant thing of, you know, the algorithms changed, you know, views aren't the same anymore. Like back in 2020, like prime time with like when I had just, you know, entered the house with the Sway Boys and like I could post a video of me staring at the camera for five seconds and it would probably do 20 million views. Come on. And it was like, it, I think we took that for granted. Like I think we really it, it's hard not to be spoiled to that. It's hard not to like see that and be like oh, anything less than this, it's like, oh, like, am I falling off? You know, it's like one of those things because I like the content that I'm putting out now way more than what I was putting out back then, you know? But like I said, there's an audience for everything. And so I think uh, the stuff that I put out now is definitely more authentic to who I am and more like catered to a specific audience. Whereas back then it was just like, all right, anyone who wants to make a video, let's do it. Let's dance, let's have our shirts off. You know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to do well. Like at the end of the day, like, so... It's uh, It was funny because we were talking, we were like, if you really put it into perspective, our least viewed video is someone who's just starting this like dream. And it's hard to kind of zoom out of that. Like when you take yourself out of your shoes and really zoom out and see for what it is, it's uh, it's pretty insane how how spoiled we were back then with all those views. And still to this day, like, I, like we were talking about before the cameras turned on, I just think I joined at a perfect time where COVID hit, and everyone was all of a sudden like, what do we do? Oh, I'm just going to go on my phone and scroll, you know, like TikTok blew up at that time and being the new up and comer, like it was, uh, it was definitely a weird feeling because it wasn't till a few months after I started gaining followers, I didn't think it was anything more than just numbers on a screen. And then my first time kind of going out after the pandemic, like going out, meaning like I went on vacation with my family in California. People recognized you. People recognized me. Came up to you and- You're that guy from TikTok, like you're Noah Beck. And I was just like, yep. I was in a, I was in a dorm room like three months ago, you know, like 
training for soccer and this is this is definitely a, and my parents like my parents knew about like the numbers and like but they thought the same thing they were just like oh that's cool you know like we don't know where these millions of numbers are coming from like it could be wherever and so when you first kind of get like start getting spotted my parents were like what like it was just a new thing to all of us and i was crazy it wow. was truly a surreal feeling now how do you ma manage your ego and not let it get to your head so much as yeah. a you know 22 year old heartthrob you know athlete social media sensation how do you or maybe you haven't figured that out yet how do you keep a good yeah. heart a kind soul uh and still be compassionate towards humanity right what with all the success the fame and you know 16 year old girls running after you everywhere <laughs> you go yeah uh it's it's flattering for sure and it's definitely and it got me blushing but like uh, it's one of those things where i think again like like we were talking about before um the people that i have chosen to surround myself with in my personal life have really helped manage that and you know i'm like i said i'm not one of the I just don't think that's how I am as a person anyway. Like I, I have give a big shout out to my parents for, for, uh, raising me, I think in the right way. And yeah. I, I owe everything to them. And I think, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I just, I know that I have, you know, I've always been confident in who I am and I've never really struggled with like confidence. But at the same time, I'm human and I have my insecurities. But I think, uh, I don't know. I, I think, yeah, the people I surround myself with, and like we were talking about, it's hard to find here in LA with yeah. how tra transactional the city can be, how- Everyone wants something from you. Everyone yeah. wants something. Why are you being nice to me? Like, why did, like, you know, it, all these questions before that are just kind of like unsaid. But um, yeah, so I'm still very much a family man. And my and my parents and my sisters definitely keep me humble. Uh, my friends uh, that I grew up with playing soccer from Arizona are still like my best friends to this day. That's great. And we're all kind of off doing our own thing, which is amazing, but we connect somehow, whether it's through like playing Xbox together or even just like, you know, in a group chat, just checking on each other. But you mentioned insecurities though. Do you have insecurities? Because you, you seem like such a positive, you know, always smiling, happy guy, fit millions of followers making money you know paris fashion week and all over the place like <laughs> yeah you're the guy how can you have insecurities and if you have them what are they yeah i think uh uh yeah i don't know i think i'm human I, you know i know i'm human i um, don't didn't mean to say i think uh <laughs> i look i know i'm human and i think uh what is that insecurity for you for me it, it just changes every day you know i've i have I think when I look into the mirror, I see things and I'm just like, you know, you can't help but think like when you, especially the comparison, you know, it goes back to that. It's like, or when I'm on TikTok, I'll be like, you know, this guy, this guy's just better looking or whatever really? it may be. Like, yeah, of course. But it's like, I sound shallow. I think I'm also just like insecure about sometimes the, I don't know, just kind of the way. I don't know. You know, I'm trying to think. Uh, Is it a feeling of like, you're not enough? You're not talented enough. You're not smart enough. You're not good looking enough. Okay. You're not as yeah. experienced enough. You're, you know, um, well, TikTok gave me this. So do I really deserve it? You okay. Know, what is the. Yeah, you got the, the wheels yeah, turning. Yeah, yeah. What is the. 100%. And this is a thing that my team gets mad at me for. My managers, my agents, like they're all like, get out of your head. And, you know, I think going back to being raised as an athlete and kind of having that like background you know if you want to win a game you work your ass off and you win the game or if you want to get better you train and you work harder at it whereas in this industry i haven't i felt like i haven't done enough to be in some of the rooms that i've really found myself for sure and i think i think it may be one of those things where it's just the world working in weird ways where you know all my training as an athlete growing up has led to this in a weird way it's rewarded me in a different way that i never thought I, like would translate but there are definitely rooms that i find myself in events that i find myself at and i'm like why am i here you know there are world-class athletes there are amazing artists there are you know every vertical and i see myself and i'm like 
I just don't think I've done enough yet. And I think that definitely is probably one of the biggest insecurities of mine is that feeling like I earned it or the feeling that I deserve this. And I think, yeah, I, I like that definitely got the wheels turning. I think that is probably the biggest one that I've kind of have faced. How often do you think about that? Like, did I really earn this? Do I deserve to be at all these big events or with these, you know, celebrities or with these talented artists or talented athletes who put in their whole life to create this career? Right. Is that a weekly thing? Is that daily? Is that like just kind of when you're at the events, right. you're like, okay, why am I here? I think it's just about every time that I get an opportunity that kind of makes me reconsider everything. Like whether it's a, you know, a big like endorsement deal, whether it's a big brand sponsorship that I get, or whether it's, you know, fashion week, I'm sitting front row next to who knows who. Yeah, yeah you know, right. exactly. It's like, I think it happens just about every single time because I know that they're sitting or it's just in my head and maybe they're not, but in my head, they're thinking like, why am I sat next to this guy? You know, really? this little TikToker. And it's like, that's what you think they're thinking. Of course. And that's just me like self-sabotaging, if you will. And I think, uh, so you feel like an imposter. Of course, which is not good. And like my team gets mad at me for it because they're like, I, I don't know. Because then it's one of those things where I, I almost enjoy that feeling i always i don't enjoy the feeling but i would rather have that mindset than being like feeling like i'm entitled hmm. to to be sat here it's like you know looking at the yeah like you're sitting next to me you know like i would not <laughs> like right which i am very well aware that there are people out there that may have that mentality and it's like huh, go like oh, i applaud the confidence um but i i don't think i would i think i would rather take the you know i haven't quite earned it yet so I'm going to continue to work until I do feel like I earn it. But I just don't know if I'll ever, like, I think it's something within me that I don't think if I continue to chase that, I might just tire myself out because I don't ever want to have that entitlement attitude of being like, but I think there's a fine line between like the gratitude and being like, I earned this, you know, I work myself off for this and I deserve to be here or I deserve this opportunity. And so that's where I'm always kind of split in between minds of mm. uh, do I deserve this or should I just be grateful for it? And I'm always grateful, but there are times where of course, like I'm insecure and I'm like, you know, it should have been this guy or really. Yeah. Are there any other insecurities or feelings of being an imposter besides that, that you experience? Nothing really like jumps to mind, but I'm sure that there are. That's the main thing though. Right. I think that's the main thing in terms of like, feeling like an imposter. For those of you who have started a business or are thinking about starting a business, listen up. If you don't feel like logo design or branding is your strong suit, BrandCrowd is here to solve your problem quickly. And I love BrandCrowd. It's a logo maker tool that can help you make an incredible logo design in just a few clicks. BrandCrowd takes your business name and industry and generates thousands of custom logos for you in just a matter of seconds. It's super cool. Once Brand Crowd generates a logo you like, you can edit fonts, colors, and the layout until it is perfect for you and your business. But Brand Crowd is more than just a logo maker. They also help create, market, and manage your business's branding. Brand Crowd also allows you to create social media designs for posts, stories, and ads for Facebook and Instagram, YouTube, and everywhere else you're looking to serve your customers. The best thing is Brand Crowd's templates will perfectly wrap around your logo and incorporate its color scheme, saving you time and making your designs on brand. And this is something that I wish I had years ago when I started my business. It would have made things so much easier and less time consuming for me. To get started today, all you have to do is visit brandcrowd.com slash Lewis and enter the name of your business. And then Brand Crowd will get creating. Then you can browse the logos and edit as many as you like for free. Here's a, qu a question I ask a lot of people on the show. Right now in your life, on a scale of one to 10, call it the inner love, uh, and the scale of inner peace and self-love. If you could give yourself a number from one to 10, one being you hate yourself and have zero peace. Okay. 10 being you have a lot of love for yourself, in a healthy way and peace internally in a good way you feel calm you feel good you feel like there's harmony there's not chaos that's a 10 
Where are you currently in your life on a scale of one to 10? It's a great question. If you're being really honest. Yeah. Where would you say you are right now? I would say I'm a, a high eight. Okay. Yeah, I've done a lot of work over the last couple of years for myself to really feel peace, love, and calm. Okay. And so Good. I used to be probably at a six and a half. Okay. Kind of up and down. Right. Around there. Right, right. But right now I'm a high eight, low nine. Okay. I think the number that initially like first jumped in my mind was uh, feeling like a seven. Okay. Yeah. So, so there's definitely room to improve, but. I'm curious then. Right before COVID hit, when you were in the dorm, training, playing with your mates, playing soccer, you know, where were you on that scale, one to 10? Honestly, if I recall correctly, I think uh, I might have been on like a nine. That's interesting. So this this Man, happens a lot for a lot of people I bring on here. Yeah. Who had a moment where life takes off in a different way. Yeah. With success, fame, and money. Mm -hmm. And almost every person I ask this to, of all ages were happier and had more peace about who they were before the success and the fame. I knew where this was going, yeah. Why do you think with 50 million followers, a lot of money, every 20 year old girl in the world wanted, interested <laughs> in you, you have lower self-love and lower peace inside of you versus three years ago before your life took off in this direction. Why do you think that is? I don't know. I think, I think there were, there were definitely factors when I was at that nine where I just don't think that, I don't think we'll ever come back. Like what? Like, I don't know. The, 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 uh, I was just at a great place in my life. I think I, w I was, we had just finished our fall season and finished winter break. I got back from a good rest and you know, it was a nice little holiday and then back to spring season. And I think something happened, uh, I think over winter break and I was just locked in and I was so committed to what I had committed to, which was, you know, soccer and being the best player I could be for the team, for myself. And I just don't know if there's, I don't know. Like, I, I really think that I was just in a good place mentally. I was like, I'm playing well. I'm, you know, school's going well. I've fortunately, I've never really, like, I was always a pretty good student. Um, both my parents are teachers. So that translates. Uh, and they made me uh, be a good student. And, um, I was just in a good place mentally. I, I think at that time I had actually just gone out of a relationship as well. I, I had a girlfriend in college from for about seven months, I would say. Like from when I think we started started dating um uh, like summer school, like when I had first came left to, high school. Left like, high school that summer like started at and it was just the athletes at school. And we had hung out a lot and she played basketball and she was amazing. And we had a great time and then, you know, there was a hiccup and then over winter break, like we had just broken up, went back to winter break, nice time at home and then came back with just like a chip on my shoulder that meaning like, I'm just going to be the best I can be. Training was going well. Like I was, I, I don't know. I was just, I think I was. You were dialed in. I was dialed in. I think I was the best player that I had been in my life. Like I think that was like the best. And then a month later, COVID hits and it's like, oh, yeah, I can't really show how good I am right now with no games, with no like actual in life training because we were doing Zoom trainings. Um, right. So then, yeah, I would came from this super like high. And then when we got sent home for COVID, it was, it was like, I don't know how long this is going to be, but I'm going to stay dialed in. Like that's not the motivation, the discipline's not going anywhere. But I don't know. And then, and then TikTok kind of took off for me. And I was like, well, I'm the most confident I've ever been as a player right now, but I'm also on the other hand, getting thrown financial opportunities yeah. and exposure opportunities and people in LA reaching out, being like, come on to LA, like collab, like this, that. And I was like, 
Simon mean? You know, like, what does that mean? And I had no clue. Like, it's just such a new thing to me. I, I didn't really grow up watching, like, I was never really in tune with social media. And that was one of the things that I was so dialed really? in about. Yeah. And I think that's why I was at, so, like, so much peace with myself, too, at, at that nine was because... I never, I never was scrolling. Like I didn't know, I didn't have anything to scroll about. You, you know, were focused as an athlete. I was you focused as an athlete. Train after school, yeah. come back, hang with the family. I, I kind of just toned out the rest of the world, and like in in a way where I didn't know what else was out there. Like I would follow like sport accounts and being like, oh, this transfer is cool, you know, or like, you know, ESPN or yeah, something. Yeah, like I, I, I had no one else to keep up with, and now I'm at a point in my life where I have friends. I, fortunately like I have friends all over the world and that I've met through social media and there's just so much more to keep up with now and if I don't I feel like I'm out of the loop wow and so now it's like as as much as soccer and training for that and being the best player I can be there was physically and mentally draining this is just a different kind of life that gets sucked out of you when you constantly are you're just constantly thinking about I don't know what how 50 million people were, would perceive you if you post this like and I can't post a single thing without me thinking that and it's like it's just I, I feel like after everything I just said I feel like it's a uh, it's kind of easy to depict where that nine kind of was it was just there wasn't many as there wasn't many distractions there wasn't yeah. as many outside voices you know whereas now it's all there is and there's constantly like this it's not much of a pressure because i'm like i'm good under pressure you know i yeah. like pressure an athlete, as an man. athlete i like yeah. pressure but it's just that feeling of i'm not doing the best i can right now you know i'm not as dialed in uh to my content to everything that i'm working on right now as i was when i was at nine playing soccer because i'm not as passionate about it and Interesting. it's like yeah in a world of possibilities, what would it take for you to get back to a nine at this level as you continue to grow? Let's say your audience doubles. Let's yeah. say you get 10 times as much money and opportunities coming your way and distractions. Yeah. What will you do to support yourself to stay, maybe not a nine, but a high level of peace and self-love? Um. Yeah, I think recently I've really been working on that. And... I think I think it's an interesting way to think of it now. I'm definitely gonna like see myself in a week and be like, where am I at number wise? Like I think I'm gonna follow a, up with you. This is check a new it thing. Yeah, exactly. I'm check it on you. This is a new way to kind of like determine where I'm at mentally. Um and I like it. But I think I don't know, definitely 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 with intent, I've been working a lot on like my mental health That's true. and you know, making sure that I'm just trying to be the best person I can be. And not for anyone else, to be honest, um, just for myself and just being the best version of myself. I, I think that's so important. And I think life's too short to like not work at your your flaws, not try to be the best you can be. And I think uh, I think there have been times where I've had people in my life and it like and it it sucks and it hurts that like I've had people in my life almost veer me away from that. And being like, really relax, let loose, like, you know, take a drink, have fun, you know, like that kind of thing. And it's like, yeah, but I know that wouldn't make me happy. I know what makes me happy. Uh, kind of. That's still a never ending search. It's but for sure. I think uh, for the most part, like I, I know when I'm at my happiest. I know like what. I don't know. I just think that there there have definitely been influences in my life recently that have kind of tried to veer me away from doing what's best for me really and i think that could be out of out of reflection of how they're feeling out of being like maybe feeling bad for themselves and being like well i don't have that in me right now so i'm gonna try to bring him down with me interesting and being like and i don't know like i'm I, again constantly split between two minds of being like you know what i i do need to kind of let loose but then as the moment i let loose is when like things seem to start crumbling and I'm like, I, I really like a routine. It's it. I mean, I can say that having structure and self-discipline and a routine and putting myself through delayed gratification while also enjoying life daily. Yeah. Brings me a lot of peace and joy. Yeah. And as an athlete, I don't know where you're at with this, but I've, you know, I've never been drunk in my life. 
Yeah. I've never been high, never been drunk. I don't do ayahuasca. I don't do mushrooms. Wow. I don't I don't dabble or try it and yeah. let loose because I know that if I went down that path, it would make me unhappy. Right. A moment of joy or an hour of joy or like a unique feeling wouldn't give me joy the next day or the next few days. Wow. So I, it doesn't mean, you know, sugar is my vice. So it's like the cookies course, and the ice course, cream is the, like, that's the my sweet drug. tooth, Of course. But, uh, when I am disciplined, when I train early in the morning, when I get good sleep, when I do something hard that day, when I connect with people I love, I feel good about me. Yeah. I feel peaceful. Yeah. It's when I'm distracted on all these different options. It may feel like a sense of fun in the moment, but the next few days I'm like, what did I just do that for? Yeah. I don't feel good. You know, that's uh, a little foggy in the brain. My body doesn't feel good. It's, and then you need more of it. Wow. So I've just yeah. never gone down that path. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I know nothing good comes if you do it for a long time. If right. I want to test it here and there, cool. But it's just, I've seen the darkest of stuff. Yeah. With alcohol, with drugs, and it never ends well. Yeah. So anyways, yeah. My, my thoughts there. But um, speaking of darkness, every time I see one of your photos or a video or a post of yours, you're, you're pretty much smiling. Yeah. yeah. You're, you're this whole time yeah, you're smiling. Coming, yeah. You seem like a very happy guy. This is obviously the first time we've connected really uh, in person in a meaningful way, but you seem to be a very happy kid. You seem to be youngest of three. You had good parents, you know, two older sisters who really yeah. supported you and probably like my older sisters told you how to treat women. Of course. Told you how to be respectful like course, they did with me. Yeah. But is there ever any moments where you are sad? Yeah. Yeah. And I think, uh, I don't know. I, uh, that, I think growing up in a female dominated household, it was, uh, it taught me a lot about women and, you know, they gave me a lot of lessons about how to treat, you know, and I've, I've had a lot of people in my life tell me how evident it is that I've had that sibling like that sister upbringing and i take that as a compliment and, and i i love that i'm able you know i i love that i have that respect and that i know that my mom it has given me everything and my dad has as well don't get me wrong but i think uh i have a certain appreciation for what women do and um but yeah going back to it i think um Oh, of course I get sad. You do? Of course. And I but think- you're always, uh, it seems like you're always happy. Yeah. You got everything going for you. How could you, how could Noah Beck be sad? I think that's, you know, I, it's weird with TikTok and with um, anything social media, anything on my phone, you know, the moment I start to, I, I bet it's listening right now. It's crazy because I'll, uh, you kind of, it, it takes you down this rabbit hole of like, I'll mention to like a friend and be like, hey, like I'm not feeling my best today. Like I, I'm- sad about this that then all of a sudden like i'll go on my for you page later and it's about like it's like sad core tiktok and it's like making me even sadder it's oh, like oh man yeah it's it, it really sucks because i'm like i don't want to see this right now i want to see like funny videos or like something that will but at the end of the day like you know i read or i'll see often um you know the people that are the happiest you know like check in on them you know because it may be a blanket or it may be something and uh i don't know i don't think i've definitely definitely get sad and I, but i think it's one of those things where i try and i had a therapist once tell me this and i and i think it really helped me um i try to like not enjoy obviously that's, a, that's the wrong word for it but i try to appreciate the times where i feel sad because that's what makes you human and I'm glad that I have those feelings because if I wasn't, then I would be a robot. And I, but I know people that are pretty numb to like, I know people that, I don't know. Like, I, I, I like how in touch I am with my emotion and I am not afraid to tell people if I get sad, I'm not like afraid to reach out, but there are definitely times where I have been and I'm getting better with it. But I think there have been times where I've kind of, you know, like it's the classic, like I'm fine, I'm fine. You know, sure. and it's like, that's when I want someone but to But you're come. really not. Yeah, yeah, like that's when I want someone to be like, just be there with me. You know, like I know, cause I've had friends that, you know, 
needed the same. And and I always want to think that I've tried to think that I'm a very compassionate person. I try you to are. be empathetic. You've got a, you got a compassionate heart. I can feel it. Thank you. And and I try, and that's something I work out a lot. And I don't ever want to let that go. But I um, I've had times where like I can see like close friends, you know, something's off, and then I just would want to give them what I would want in that moment. And everyone's different, so it's like they may react to it differently. But I know at the end of the day, like it's easier or it's it would be better if i was there for them than if i was not right. despite whether they want it or not and i don't know but what i get sad about I, it's so many things but i think recently what we were talking about a bit about off camera and uh what i have no problem talking about is uh you know we're all human you know we all have relationships with other humans interactions and uh yeah, I think that that was one of the things that I've probably been most sad about lately. Really? Yeah, and I think... Um, well, to give context to this, uh, you know, when I first heard about you, you were blowing up on social media, and then I started seeing you in a relationship on social media. And this is something that I think is... There's some pros and cons to being in a relationship publicly. Of course. Especially in a social media world. Yeah. What has been the the best part about being in a relationship publicly on social media with someone who's also growing in their own inspiring ways? Yeah. And what has been the most challenging part about that experience in relationship on social media? Yeah, I think I think the best part was that we were there for each other and that we understood how one another were feeling when something like it wasn't a completely new world. I didn't have to explain to my partner, you know, this is how I'm feeling. And them being like, well, I don't understand because I can't even imagine, you know? And it was kind of just like an unsaid thing that we both just kind of understood. Like, hey, if you were getting, if something were to happen and they were getting hate online, whether, you know, even though it blows, blows off in a day or two, like there would just be times where I'm like, like, I know I'm here telling you not to look at it. I can't be naive and be like, you know, I like I understand. Like, I'm like, I get it. Like, seeing it, despite whether it, it gets to you or not, I can only imagine, like, because when it happens to me, like, when there, whether it's, like, a controversy, like, I don't know. I haven't been in anything, like, crazy, thank God, and knock on wood. Because, just like, some like I said. comments here and there, yeah. Yeah, like I, like I said, it's one of those things where I just am myself. So yeah. if I, if I ever... I don't know. Like I have nothing really to hide. So thankfully. And, but there were times when just something would happen and, you know, she would get comments that were not very nice. And I'm just like, you know, it's, it's not like a totally oblivious thing where if I was dating someone else that wasn't in the industry, they would be like, just don't look at it. You're fine. Yeah, you know? Yeah. And it's like, I get it. And I think that was the best, like one of the best parts of the relationship was knowing that we just, we were in it together and we both just understood we both had this like unspoken like yeah like we just kind of just got each other yeah. in a sense and uh and then and the biggest challenge about being in a public yeah position. i think the biggest challenge was especially uh, as a 20 year old yeah yeah you know and really your first deeply intimate you know kind of relationship is what it sounds like yeah i think that that right there was probably the hardest part was uh it kind of us just figuring this out together and despite i don't know she she had moved out to la a few months before i did and when i came out to la like we we, we kind of hit it off very quickly we started off as like really good friends and i was just like i just really like being around this girl and then you know one thing led to another and we're dating and then the word gets out and so now we're in a public relationship at 19 and it's like who she was 19 as well at the same time yeah same age yeah, yeah same age and um i think the biggest challenge was just like everyone having a say everyone like you could have zero followers and your comment could blow up and typically with how social media is and just how everything is it's like typically the things that go the most viral or to get the most attention are negative things you know, it's never like, I love them so much together. Like, and it, people are going to see that and whatever. Like, you know, it's like, or on the latter, the, it's like, I hate them together. Here's why. And it's like, 
that'll get uh -huh. more views. I don't know. It's just everyone having a say, despite who you are, where you're from, what you know about us. Like, I think everyone has a voice. Everyone's in the relationship at that point. Wow. And that, that was very tricky because we were figuring this world out and you're figuring life out. Right. You're we're human. Social we're media out. 19 years old. Like we're human and like no one ever has it figured out. But at 19, you really don't have it figured out. And like, despite like, I think I'm very grateful for everything that I have to this day, but like, I'm still figuring it out. I still don't know what I want to do. I'm still like, it is not all sunshines and rainbows. And I think, uh, I think that's just part of being human. And yeah, I would say what, what made you most sad about the experience? the the ending of it mm. um and i think yeah i think just having someone in your life like having that support system and someone that knows every little thing about you literally like and i don't know we just such a weird time like it was something that not many people can relate to and so, like everyone has their first true love and i th i i she was mine and i think everyone's experience is different but i think the ways our the way ours trickled down was just so bizarre and so unique in terms of you know you like a girl you start dating her you're 19 years old this is a normal thing you'd be in college you know you're going to school you're holding your bags you know you're doing that stuff whereas like this time it's like Hey, like, do you want to hang out today? Like, no, I have a, I have a photo shoot or, you know, no, like I'm shooting a music video or this, that. And it's like, or you're together every single day. And I don't, there's just so many like factors to it. And I think us, I don't know. I can go, I can go on and on about like what makes like a breakup hard. But at the end of the day, I think most people know what makes it hard. I think just like our our bond that we had w w was really tricky. And I think uh, it was tricky to recover from because it was so good. And then- uh, right. I remember seeing a video of you. I can't remember where, it must've been a year and a half ago, two years ago. Someone asked you a question. It might've been a vlog somewhere. Somehow this popped up on my TikTok or YouTube or something yeah. and, I, and I saw it. Where I remember hearing you say, someone asked you a question about, will you marry her? Yeah. And you said, yes, like without a hesitation Yeah, or would you like to marry her or if, you know, whatever it was, but they said something about what, would you want to marry her? And you were just like, yes. Yeah. Like straight on in their face, like no hesitation. Yes. So when you have that expectation, especially an in intimacy in a relationship that then who knows what happens in the future, but then there's a breakup. How does that make you feel when you had that vision? Yeah, I uh, my mom always told me that I w I thought a lot with my heart, and I'm a very I, I'm a logical thinker as well. But I think when you're when you're blinded by love, it's like you know that, that there's that hope, and like I think what I had with her, there like I I held on to any bit of hope, really, and yeah, and um, I don't know. I I wish. I don't know. Like, I think I, I love very, what's the word? I, I love hard. Like, I love, deep. Honest, I love deeply and I love like, I don't know. I, I like dedicated a lot of my time to being the best boyfriend I could. Really? To, yeah. And, um, and the bond was strong. Yeah. The bond was strong. That's not like to toot my own horn or anything. Like I just was, I'm very confident in the way that we were together and you know things just it's life like things just don't last always and things aren't forever and i don't know i still have so much love for her and it's just one of those things where we both have stuff to figure out and we both have a lot of growing to do because i think us hopping into that relationship and us not even relationship aside i think us having the careers we do now has stunted a lot of things that would have, I don't know. Like, I think it stunted a lot of things that like a normal 19 year old should have experienced. Like what? Like she never went to college, for example. So in school years, I was ahead of her one year. So I had like a bit of a college experience, whereas she was going to go to Alabama and like get that experience. She never had it. She never had it. And she went right to Hollywood. Right to Hollywood. 
and intense, man. It's intense. And it's, a, it's really straight out of the movies. Like, it's really one of those things where it's like, you know, you move to Hollywood, but in like, there was never that. It's, it's just so different than what you see in the movies where like you go out to Hollywood, you know, you get a job as a waiter and then like you're going to auditions and you're like trying to make it. Whereas like, we kind of moved out because we made it. We made it. <laughs> yeah, we you moved out and we had the, the, like I wouldn't have dropped my division one full ride scholarship. I wouldn't have dropped that for nothing. Like I had a guaranteed spot in this house, a guaranteed, like lots of talks with like the manager of the house and was like, we can promise you that you'll grow. We can promise you that we can provide this in like exposure. And I was just like, okay, okay, like, yeah. let's give it a shot. You know, it's like soccer was on pause at the time. So it was one of those things, but yeah, we kind of like, and when she moved out, like they had made it. And it's one of those things where I don't know. I, uh, it's just, it's just crazy. It's, it's crazy. Yeah. Hey guys, thank you so much for being here. A quick message before we dive in. You may be watching the show, but haven't taken a moment to click the subscribe button below. So if you've ever gained value from this show, it would mean so much to me if you click the subscribe button right now. And not only will this allow you to see these messages first, all this great content we have, you're gonna get notified first when it comes out. But the bigger our subscriber base grows, the more people we can impact and the bigger the guests we can get on this show as well. So again, thank you so much as always for your support. It means the world to me. Make sure to click the subscribe button below and let's dive into this conversation. If you could go back right before you moved here, right before you met her, and give yourself advice, three pieces of advice about entering a relationship with someone, whether it's her or anyone, knowing what you know now, after a lot of highs, amazing connection, you know, a lot of love, a bond, but then, you know, a heartbreak and some sadness, what advice would you give to yourself at 19? Um, I would, number one, I would say protect yourself, protect your heart. And I think that is like something that I'm very, it's guarded up now. Yeah. And I think, I don't know. I, I think, yeah. Protecting yourself, uh, taking it slow. You know, we, we, we're 19, you know, we, we really liked hanging out with each other. So we were like, let's just, we might as well date, you know, it's one of those things. And so, and especially when COVID was happening, we were with each other every single day. And it was like, I think, you know, you're, when you're constantly available for someone that can be, that can be taken advantage of. And I think being less available in the future not not because i want to yeah i want to be there like every single day i want like to drop anything at like the sound the, like the sound of the text and like if, wh like what are you doing oh where, do, where what do you want me to be doing like yeah. you know i just how i am like and, sure. like my mom lover to, yeah i'm a lover i love love but it's also what makes me the most sad sometimes and i think that's well, if you, if you give and give and give and then there's maybe an unspoken expectation or yeah. you 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 would hope or wish someone wouldn't do the same for you. And I'm not speculating anything here. I'm just saying, you know, when you're a giver and you want to see someone happy and you love the feeling of being with someone and you feel happier together, it's really challenging when it doesn't work out. Yeah. And I've had many yeah. sad breakups yeah. that were painful and hard and challenging, but at the same time, taught me the most about how I can be a better person, how right. I can create better boundaries for myself, how I can, ha how I can courageously communicate yeah. consciously in better ways with, you know, the next partner I was with to, to make sure that I focus on my vision first and then bringing the relationship in yeah. second, as opposed to dropping everything always exactly. for the partner, just the balance there. But yeah, filling up your own cup. Hey, and then filling up your own cup constantly. Having them fall in love with the overflow. Yeah, that was like, I think, yeah, like one of the, that's that's one of the things that I mean, she taught me was, and I think unintentionally she taught me to like really protect myself. Cause, really? I, mean, I just, I yeah, I like, yeah, fall hard and fast. And I was, uh, I don't know, everything kind of just moved very quickly and then, yeah, when you are a giver, it's one of those things where you just so bad want to see them happy, and then yeah. 
when you realize it's not you and when you realize or I don't even when you like I never fully realized that like that was the thing I was like no nah, like I'm not taking no for an answer I'm gonna try my hardest to like make it work make it work you know and always gonna be available I'm never gonna give her a reason to not be happy and then you realize it's when they constantly keep telling you it's not you like in it's the hardest thing because it's like look I know it's not me but like I know it's not me making you sad because I'm doing everything I can to make you happy but I'm gonna try to be the one to make you happy right and it's like when they constantly tell you like it's just nothing you can do it's like I don't want to take no for an answer, you know? I don't want to say, like, like I don't want to, like, accept the fact that I can't make my girlfriend happy. And that was probably the biggest the biggest thing that we ran into was... And I know that feeling. I see a lot of my self in you with that because as athletes, we mm-hmm. don't want to fail. No. And you're like, well, I'm going to do whatever it takes. We're going to yeah. make this work. Even if it's hurting me, mm-hmm. I'm going to do what it takes to That's make crazy. this work. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. I've had so many people, yeah. And that is a painful... Uh, realization yeah when you're like i'm doing everything I'm, I'm shifting i'm doing i'm changing who i am just so that it works and then it doesn't work and you're like wow i just shifted my whole identity for a relationship that no longer doesn't work yeah and i did that too many times yeah i repeated that pattern in many relationships yeah. because partners i ch- chose for whatever reason weren't happy with me yeah and i and they wanted me to change to try to make them happy and it never worked. And I finally realized, it took me until a few years ago, that I finally realized that you can't make your partner happy. You can add to their happiness. Right. But they got to focus on their own happiness. Yeah, as soon as it if becomes someone's reliant. A, yeah. If someone's a five out of a 10, you can't bring them to a, a nine right. consistently. You might be able to influence them to get to a six moments here and there yeah, and yeah. add to their happiness. Yeah. But if they are not doing their life in a way that brings them joy and fulfillment, yeah, there's not much we can do. No, and that's a hard thing for athletes like us who want to win and yeah. want to succeed and want to like accomplish. It's really hard, man. Yeah. And the thing that I want to acknowledge you for, Noah, is being 22. And you mentioned talking to a therapist. I think I would have never at 22 talked to a therapist. Yeah. I started 30, 10 years ago talking to therapists. It was one of the best things that ever did for me. It helped me bring me so much peace. It's what's gotten me to a, a high eight, low nine yeah. of inner peace. Yeah, yeah. It's having that place to process, having that place to learn new tools. So the fact that you're doing this at 22, I, I really commend you for that and acknowledge you for, for doing that because I think it's a powerful tool to use. Now, <clears throat> what advice would you give to yourself moving forward and navigating this next season? Because I know you're trying to figure out like okay well who am i again and and you know you love deeply but do you do you even think it's you know worth getting into another relationship soon with someone or is it like you want to give yourself space and time to kind of really focus on yourself and your career what's what's the advice you would give yourself of this next chapter yeah i uh i think that's something i'm like actively searching for is uh at the end of the day, like just doing what makes me happy and finding out what makes me happy is like, again, like a never ending search because it's like, yeah, this ha- makes me happy in the moment, you know, like going to an amusement park, riding rides with like friends and stuff like that. Like that makes me happy, but that's not something I can like apply to my everyday life that can make me more at peace with myself. Like, you know, so doing things, I don't know, like I, I really... I don't know. I, I think these past few months, I've I've really, like what we were talking about before the camera, it's one of those things where when you end with someone on good terms, it's, it's hard because it's like... You guys ended on good terms? On great terms. On great terms? Great terms. So it was like, you still care, but that makes still it even harder other, because it's like, still... then it gets dragged out. Like, even though it was a year ago, it gets dragged out. And then it's like, you're still there for each other. And then, you know, you, you still want to tell your person every good thing that happens. You still want to like tell them like, hey, this happened today. Like, and then, you know, and I don't know. And then as soon as, yeah, I, I'm. So was it like some blow up? Or, no, not at all. Get away from me and I hate you. It not was, at all. I love you so much, but we can't be together right we now. We have to grow apart. We have to. Gosh, that's the hardest. The hardest. And uh, that's why it's tricky now because, you know, it, it comes to a point where I was telling you like where 
you almost, you wake up a bit confused sometimes because I'm like, you know, I feel like I'm good. You know, like I feel like I want to rekindle it. Like I want to give it another go, you know? And then ultimately it's not up, it's not up to you. When you, when you, the other person's fully in control of the decision, the decision. And then when the ball's in their court, I mean, like when you're ready, just know that I'm here. It's a bit tricky. There's a bit of a power play. That's like, as much as I just want to like wait around. Cause I do enjoy this person so much. And like, yeah. And hard to imagine life without them. Sometime there is like this, when you kind of go no contact, you kind of step away from it. And then it's like months, like a couple months go by and it's like, okay, wow. Like I, I'm feeling better. Like the first month is really and hard. Then, I'm feeling better. Then all of a sudden, all it takes is a little, little point back in. Little. All it takes is like a text like, hey, man, miss girls you. Know, girls it, know what they're doing, man. They know exactly. Girls know what they're it's, doing it, sometimes. It's so tricky. And a lot like you, like I, I don't drink and I've never drank in my life. I've never done any drugs. I just, I, I don't have that excuse sometimes where sometimes. So you got to feel it. I'm still you feel yeah, the pain, the sadness. You yeah, gotta go through the experiences. Exactly, and I don't have that excuse as to, sorry, I didn't mean to text. Like I was drunk. And All right, it's like it's been three months, and you randomly, t- and so it's like oh, now I'm back man. into it. And so that's that's the hardest part is knowing that like if I decide to text you, that is sober me. That is me that genuinely means it. You know, it's it's never a question of like. Like, I don't like, was this just a drunk text? Like, does she mean it? Like, this, right. that. it's, it's like, from it's me, like, yeah. it's like, I'm going to respect your boundaries. But if it comes to a point where I'm just like, I don't care. Like, I'm just going to follow my heart. Like, I want to do this again. It's like, I don't know. It's tricky. It's very tricky. But yeah, this, this feels a lot like, mm. a, like talks that I have with like a therapist. Yeah, and, yeah of course, man. And it's, um, yeah, I, I'm glad I started talking to him too. Cause I've had friends that recommended me Wow, because I don't know, even when things started to get really good, even when I started to get into a better mindset of like, you know, life goes on and I can love this person from afar. But right now it's like, if we have, if we're meant to be, there's no rush and it's like, we'll find each other. So I think there's really no point in rushing it. And that's like what I kind of had to accept. And so with this therapist, I'm like, it's nice talking to someone when things are good so that they stay good. That's the best time, dude. Cause it's like, when they're bad, it's like, you have tools to use. Like when things are like, when you get in that mindset of thinking, when you go down a rabbit hole, it's like, remember what they told you, like do this, do that. But when you're happy, it's like, you know, that's the time when you're supposed to stay happy. When I entered the relationship I'm in with my girlfriend, Martha, we started dating. We took it slow. Yeah. We took it slow, which I never done in the past, but we, I decided I'm going to do everything different. Yeah. And we took it slow. I was also doing individual therapy. And we made a commitment, an agreement together before we got exclusively committed. Yeah. We said, I made the suggestion, but she was like quickly to agree. I said, hey, I would really like to start in therapy together. Couples therapy. Yeah. And just try it differently. Because I'd been in a lot of failed relationships. I tried a lot of stuff and none of it worked. So let me try something completely different. Yeah. She was like, absolutely, I'm down. And it has been the greatest gift That's we have given ourselves and yeah. the relationship because any disagreement, any misunderstanding, any confusion or feeling of like, oh, they didn't feel good. Yeah. We're able to communicate it consciously whenever we go to that session together. And it allows us to create ground rules. It allows us to create boundaries. Yeah. It allows us to create agreements. And it brings me more peace. Yeah. Having that understanding. And someone equally as committed to personal growth yeah as i am love it and it and it's i'm not saying you need to do that 22 in the relationship that you get next but for me doing it when things are good is the best time to do it so i really acknowledge you for doing that yeah yeah um i I love the the lessons that you would give your younger self yeah take it slow Mm -hmm. and it sounds like you know you had this realization hey we're meant to be we'll find each other at some point yeah whether it's in a week a year, three years, you know. So taking it slow, I think, is is great wisdom that you shared with yourself. Took some time to come to that, though. It definitely took some time to like acknowledge that that was the case. Because I'm like, you're, you know, you're sitting there fighting for it, and it's like, 
and make this work. Let's let's do it. Let's give it another go. What do you need, and how can I do this? For how you? can I help? You know, like you know, don't worry about how I'm feeling because that does not matter right now. Like what matters is like we make you happy, and it's like at what cost? Like at what point is it like? Do you have to take a step back? Because if I saw one of my friends doing this, what would you say to them? I'd be like, dude, come on! Like you got to put yourself first. Like you you have to like <laughs> think, you know. And I'm like, it's so hard when you're blinded by oh, it. Man. But yeah, I uh, yeah. So if Tricky. you saw a friend of yours struggling in a relationship, you'd be like, hey, if she needs space, give her space and go focus on your life. Yeah, it's so hard. To right? Do, yeah, it's so hard when you're in it because it's like, and you know what the sexiest such a fixer. thing? And you know what the sexiest and most attractive thing is for a woman? Is when a man is fully committed to his vision and his mission, taking yeah. care of his life, yeah. in service to his friends, his family, his community, and joyful. Yeah. Not needing a relationship, not checking in constantly to see, hey, yeah. what can I do for you? But in his purpose, that is when women are most attracted to men. Yeah. And to, so- To independence coming together, yeah. It's... And, and then you can come together and support one another with each other's lives individually and together. But if you're always in support, I think it's amazing. Yeah. I understand where you're coming from. Yeah. I think it's like, wow, that's like a dream guy. Right. Who's I always here to show up for her. And like- I'm flattered that you say that because it's like in my head, I'm like, you know, who's the kind of guy I want dating my daughter or my, I mean, yeah, daughter, future, kids, yeah. Fu future kid, but also my sisters, you know, I'm very yeah. like, even though I'm the youngest, like I'm still very protective of my sisters sure. and like, if they started talking to a guy and I don't like it. I'm going to tell her, I'm like, sure. don't waste your time. Like, I, I don't, I don't like this guy. Like, and here's why, <laughs> but fortunately I haven't really, I haven't really had to say that to either of them. They, they're, they're good at picking, which is nice. Um, but I, I think it's one of those things where. I don't know. Like, I don't ever really want to change how, like, those qualities about myself. And I've questioned them because I'm like, this isn't working right now. Do I, I don't know. Like, I, I get so split in between two minds of, like, this isn't working. Should I try the latter? Should I You shouldn't not? be a jerk. Yeah, exactly. It's like, I don't ever want to even, like, question, like, should I, you know, because there's that saying, nice guys finish last. And it's like, I don't think that's the case, honestly. Like, I, I really think, like, kindness wins at the end of the day. It it's like, But it's not about changing. It's about evolving. Right. And it's keeping the core of who you are, the values, the generosity, the kindness, the support. That's like a dream. Yeah. As a friend and as a partner. Right. And it's evolving into saying, my health, my mission, my, my values need to be my number one priority. Yeah. And that's hard to say. Yeah, and, definitely. And most, most people don't, like most people in relationship don't like hearing that. Mm -hmm. And this is my personal experience. Again, I'm not sharing this as like what everyone should do. But when I shifted this and I said, instead of making someone else number one and making my mission and my health number one, and then a relationship, second or third. Yeah. Everything shifted for me. And my relationship is healthy and happy. My girlfriend loves that about me because i have it on purpose and she still thinks i'm very generous and giving and i show up in a big way yeah so it's not like you're changing into like i'm never going to be there the yeah. opposite is showing up for yourself the way you would right. for someone like that right, right first and then showing up for right them. no it makes sense prioritizing other things yeah and, and yeah. that's it what has been the biggest thing that's opened up for you during this conversation as we get to the last few questions i don't know I think, uh, I think at times I find myself in like, again, going back to like my mom and like my dad, like they always kind of told me I'm a bit of a, a bit of an old soul, but like, I, I, I take it as a compliment, but I also am like, nah, -uh, like I can have fun like this, that, uh, but I think I just grew up with older people and I grew up with like older friends and like to this day, all my like closest friends in LA are older and I don't know, I, I find like wisdom and I find like more experience very appealing and like not even just as like I'm not saying like I'm old into older women like it's like sure um as like friends and like yeah. companions it's nice to know that someone has like I like to learn from people and I like to be a sponge in conversations and I like to like really just you know soak everything in and I think that's been lovely talking yeah, to you today about and just like hearing these things because obviously 
you know, I share a lot with my therapist, but at the same time, like, it's nice to hear it from, yeah, man. you know, a guy perspective where, I don't know, it's just been nice. That's good, man. Yeah. yeah. It's been a fun conversation. Um, I've got a few final questions for you, but I know you've been working on a few things. How can we support you in your professional career right now? What's the thing you're most excited about that you are launching? Yeah. So, I mean, the main thing right now, uh, I would say is the recent launch of my apparel brand. Yeah. Yeah. As of right now, it's genderless undergarments and gender neutral. It's called Efees or Efees. Efees. Or, uh, you know, all my friends are like, so when, when am I getting some IFIS? And I'm like, yeah, that works too. You that know, it's too, like, yeah, I'm yeah. not going to sit here and be like, it's Efees. You know, it's yeah, like, sure. you know, it's a motto. So, however you want to pronounce it. But yeah, it's a, uh, as of right now, we just have underwear and undergarments. Um, but like I said, genderless. And so made for everyone. And it's uh, it's really, I'm really excited about it. And I'm really passionate about this new project because I didn't want this brand to be merchy, if you will. I wanted to, I want I want to build a brand and I want to curate something and foster a community that has yeah. for everyone. And I want, you know, it, it's really cool. Like it's one of my favorite parts about social media and it's one of my favorite parts about being an influencer content creator whatever um you know creating an aesthetic and i and i and i really have fun with like photography and all this and so for our first campaign shoot we we kind of went back in time to and did like a greek mythology Ooh. type thing and it was really cool and i had a blast doing it but yeah the story of ephes kind of originates back in uh greek mythology okay yeah and i can bore you with the whole story of the details but it's basically a, a lovely beautiful story about um at the end of the day like love conquering all it's about like gender fluidity um you know this king that wanted a, a son but then had a daughter and then raised her as a son and then she fell in love with a girl and so wow. it's just like love conquering all at the end of the day and like i think it goes perfectly i know we kind of rabbit hole down like relationship stuff and i can talk forever but that's just like <laughs> it goes back to i just love love but it's also like my biggest kryptonite i think is like it, it definitely hurts me the most um but yeah with with efis i'm just very excited and you know right now at this given moment uh soon releasing more but right now we have two uh designs of the underwear two waistbands if you will um one is called the heritage and one is called the classic and yeah i love them like they're great and and i really and i, I mean i think the the uh, like initial idea of creating an underwear brand like i'm sure you might be wondering like why underwear like why uh, why even doing this like <clears throat> when i first started social media like what gained me a lot of my my following what i think got shirtless. a lot of views shirtless, shirtless and yeah, uh yeah. me and the boys were kind of uh we were free billboards for calvin klein uh, right. with our waistbands like always showing like really? that kind of thing yeah and i was like had this idea and i was like what if what if we owned, like, what if we wore something that we owned and just constantly had it in our content organically where it's not like, we're not getting paid to post it. We're not doing this, but at the end of the day, it's just pushing something that we're passionate about and that is ours. And so I kind of kept this idea to myself and cause I was like, I don't even know where to start. Like, this is just an idea I had. And then, um, after some time, the conversation came back up and after we all kind of split ways and like moved into different houses, um, I had a talk with my manager. I was like, I really want to do this. Like, I think this is really cool and I'm kind of exciting. Uh, and it was at the time when I kind of started to get more into fashion as well. And I was like, this just feels perfect. Like, I feel like we should do this. And then I was like, where do we start? And fortunately I was, I had people around me that, you know, I asked a lot of questions. I had, um, you know, a lot of friends that, you know, like, like yourself that I would go to and be like, that are older and be like, Hey, put your arm around me like how do we do this like mentor me a bit like on how to start a business and how to do this like I want to learn and so in creating this brand like I made sure I was very hands-on because I was like this is my baby like this yeah, is like my course. thing that I want to really blow up and in, like in a couple years I like everything goes well like the dream happens like I want people to buy the product for what it is and not even know that I have anything to do with it like so yeah it's something that is uh really exciting to me and it's I exciting man. yeah I and, can see it yeah. see it on you and eventually open up to i mean there's really no like 
there's no cap. Like, I don't, I don't know where it's going to go as a brand, but very exciting things. I think it's a, it's one of those things where we'll kind of just see where it goes, see where yeah. it goes. And can we buy right now? Is it out? Is it launching? You can buy right now. Yeah. So came out June 6th was the launch of the official like, uh, site and everything. So yeah, right now we just have the icon or the classic and the heritage. And okay. What's the website? It's called ephis.us. I P H I S, right? Yes. Okay. Dot US. Dot US. Or if we go to your Instagram or TikTok, it's, it's anywhere. It's in You'll here. find it. Yeah. It's in my bio. Yeah. Ephis. Ephis. Dot US. I love that. You're yeah. also you're also all over social media, Noah Beck everywhere. Um, so make sure you guys check out Noah's content, follow him, subscribe. Even though you're not an OG commenter, you can still join the party of the fifty million plus and <laughs> and, and hang out. Um, these are a couple of questions I ask everyone at the end, but I usually don't have many people your age on here. I've had a few people in there, you know, young twenties, but, okay. uh, I'm going to ask you this question and have you dream and imagine for a moment. So this question is called the three truths. It's a hypothetical question. Imagine you get to live as long as you want to live 80, 90, hundred, 120, whatever it is. You get to live as long as you want to live, but it's your last day. And you have accomplished, created, and experienced life to the fullest in every area, financially, career, personally, professionally, love, all these things, family, all of it. You've all created fulfilled. this life. Love it. Right? Okay. But for whatever reason, in this scenario, you've got to take all of your content, your work, your business, your products to the next place. They're not here in this physical world anymore. So no one has access to this conversation, to anything you've ever posted online. It's all gone. Okay. Hypothetical. And for whatever reason, you get to leave three truths behind, three lessons that you would share with the world. And that's all we have to remember you by are these three truths. What would be those three truths that you would leave behind? Hmm. Trying not to steal like a quotes that I've seen. I'm trying not to steal. Whatever comes to your heart. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever you feel. If there's a quote that really stands out to you as a, as a good truth, feel free to share it. I think something that I try to spread and I think that can resonate with all my content and kind of going back to like, you know, despite, you know, being able to get sad and, you know, being human, um, I try to be very positive. And I think uh, that kind of goes back to, you know, a life's too short. You might as well do what makes you happy. So I think uh, doing what makes you happy could be one. Okay. Um, you know, it's funny. There was I had I had lunch with a friend not too long ago, and we like we had known each other and like, but we never had like a proper like sit down. And I was like fortunate enough that we got the chance to kind of like our our schedules, our busy schedules, kind of aligned up. Yeah, and so it was nice like having like a really nice conversation with him. And one of the things that he told me was that I'm definitely going to have the truth because I think this, it, it just like really, I don't know. It, it just like really like touched me in a way that I was like, if you're ever doubting something, if you're ever doing this. And he told me, he was like, don't ever keep your talents hidden. Um, Cause if you do, you're owing the world like a dis like a disservice. And so like, by not sharing your talents, you're, you know, stealing the world from potential joy mm. that people can get from you. So I thought that was really interesting. Beautiful. And I think that can resonate with like what I do as a social media content creator is like everything that I put out, it's really amazing. And I think the my favorite comments are like, it's not my favorite, but it's the comments that like really like touch me and like really hit me and like really... I don't know, I guess, give me that reassurance that I'm doing something right is when people say like, you genuinely saved my life or like that stuff like is really like knowing that there's someone out there that you've saved with your videos is just insane to me. And so that's why I think like that one kind of hits home because there could be someone out there that needs to hear what you have to say. Yeah. So say that. Say one of the third truth. And the third truth, I would say, um, I don't know. This is kind of like more advice to myself that yeah. I think could be. I like that. And I, it kind of goes go back to it, but instead of just your heart, I would say protect your peace. Ooh. And I think like, again, a bit cliche, but 
it's one of those things where it's simple, but it's so true. Like I think, uh, I think once I kind of started to apply that to my life, I think things got a lot, a lot better. Yeah, man. For, I don't know, just find, finding something that like makes you at peace and finding something and then finding ways to like constantly apply it. So it doesn't, yeah. yeah. It's beautiful, man. The simplest stuff is usually the most important. So yeah. I love these three truths. Um, before I ask the final question, no, I want to acknowledge you for your openness. I appreciate yeah. your openness. I appreciate your generous heart, your, you know, your candor and everything that you shared today. And the fact that you're, I, again, I think I told you before, I haven't seen you really do a long form conversation like this. So I appreciate you yeah. being willing to put yourself out there and open up about these things, because I think it's going to inspire and help a lot of people with you doing this. And I hope you do more of this in the future. Yeah. Uh, so I acknowledge you for everything you've had to go through over the last three years, you know, Although someone watching or listening might say, well, this kid doesn't have to, have to go through that much because it's been success, money, fame. Of course, of course. Um, but it's the quote that I'm going to butcher, but uh, paraphrase from Jim Carrey he said, I wish everyone would become rich and famous and realize it's not everything. Yeah. You know, I wish everyone would experience it and realize it's not the key to happiness. And this said it better, yeah. And so I acknowledge you for having to experienced life at 19 into 22 yeah with all this happening all at once i'm sure a lot of amazing exciting things but also some weird confusing of course you know, of course course challenging things too um final question for you noah what is your definition of greatness i would say greatness to me is applying yourself every day to be the best version of yourself and doing just doing all the right things while also, you know, living a little and having some fun, sure. you know? And I sure. think that's, that's where I'm constantly split is, uh, you know, maybe, maybe I do need to let loose a little, but at the same time, like, yeah. I, so I think, yeah, I think that would, that would be my definition of greatness. Something that I find a little bit difficult about the internet is that Sometimes it removes that humanity. Like, oh, you're just a person. You're one sentence. You're one comment. You're one 15 second clip. But everyone you encounter, online or in person, have like a whole backstory to them. 